Hi, this is Bob Weiss. I'm the host of Shaking Your World. Cheers. Folks, welcome home. Yet another issue of Flash in the Pan. This time a little bit different. I'm not cooking, first of all, and we are on location in Key West, Florida. Well, Key West isn't really part of Florida. We are at El Cibonet, and this is one of my favorite restaurants in the entire country. I would fly here just to have food at this joint. Coming here for years, had great experiences, um, and I expect the same thing today. The smells are marvelous walking in. You know me, it's all about the smell anyway. So I'm gonna have a couple simple things. I'll have the roast pork, I'll have some uh, um, conch chowder probably. We'll see what goes in there. Brianna, what are you gonna have? So far, Cuban coffee. Cuban coffee, okay. I got that going too. Uh, Patrick, what are you in for? I'll show you, what do you recommend? Uh, the Ropa Vieja is quite nice here, but any of the seafood dishes are extraordinary. The snapper is something that they really excel at. I just wanted to get myself around some Cuban pork because aside from mine, I haven't had it for a while. So, you know, here we are at the source. Pardon me? A lot of shrimp. There is a lot of shrimp here. We have, uh, of course, we're on an island, so we have a big ocean all around us. Um, I think uh, it, it really came on the radar for me in like uh, 2010. And. Uh, yeah, so it first came on the radar for me in like 2010, and uh, I've been down a number of times after that time, but uh, there, there are times that I'll be in Key West and I'll be here two or three times per week or for that two or three days that I'm here. I think that much of this joint. Um, the foods are every bit as authentic as anything that any of the Cubans that I associate with back home uh, will bring me and have taught me how to make, and it's just phenomenal flavors. And this is the real thing, as opposed to some other maybe big name places that people talk about in Miami or other joints. This is really uh, what I'm looking for. I don't think we're ready yet. Oh, yeah, I, I guess I'm Thank you. Anyway, we're about to uh, order our food to come back and I'll catch you in a few minutes and we'll see what it looks like as it comes up. Thanks. Folks, here we are in uh, Key West and continuing our saga of both uh, historic and ghost tours and certainly taking time out for some exquisite food at El Cibonet, one of my favorite restaurants in the entire country. Um, we have, of course, one of the owners with us today that is going to chat and just speak a little bit about Cuban cuisine and about Key West and about just the marvelous aspect of being here and enjoying this. Well, thank you. Thank you, guys. My name is Gerson Batista. I'm actually here in Key West for about 15, 16 years. Well, the restaurant's been here for about 40 years. So that's a great thing. So it's something that is a landmark in Key West. So, uh, your family from Cuba, your family the Dominican Republic, your family in Puerto Rico. You know, almost at some point, it's this great melting pot of the Caribbean that all fits together, isn't it? Well, actually, we are from the Dominican Republic, but we acquired the restaurant from the original families away from Cuba. They got here in the 70s and started off all Cibonade all the way from 1979. So, it's wonderful. Phenomenal. So, if you had a favorite uh, course here, what would that be? What's your favorite item so, on the menu? Well, I'm a garlic guy. Okay. So I love the garlic shrimps or the grilled garlic chicken. Camarones, okay. But we also we we usually do also our number one is our number one seller, the roast pork, and we put some. That's what happens when you live, and we also do a lot of mojo onions has a lot of garlic on top that we put on the on the roast pork. Sure. So the bitter orange, traditional bitter orange in the mojo, of course. Those onions are phenomenal. Uh, how do you make those? This one key point that we use in there. We use key lime juice. Okay. Being the keys, key lime pie, the key limes. So we use the key lime juice as our main ingredient for the mojo. And it's exquisite, by the way. Oh, it's amazing. Thank it's you. amazing. We love it. So the myriad seafoods that you do, in addition to the camarones, in addition to the shrimp you're doing, obviously I had grouper that was quite nice. Um, I've had everything on your menu at different times, and, and I can't say a bad thing about any part of this. In fact, that's one of the reasons I would literally fly here just to have dinner sometime. The great thing about being in Key West is that you could get fresh seafood. But it's also a bad side about it. Sometimes when we have bad weather and they can now go out and fish, then there might be a couple of days that we don't have like the whole fresh fish and we don't have any of the fresh fish that we get all the time because they couldn't go out and fish. Well, that's really the way it should be though, honestly, right? Um, so, you know, what changes have you seen taking place in the Key West? Certainly during the pandemic, it's been a challenge for all of us. Well, actually, it's been sad for everybody. I mean, one of the biggest things is the cruise ships. They're not coming. We don't know when they're coming again. I mean, we used to get around between 25 to 300, you know, people every single day uh, coming into town, but not anymore. 
I remember vividly uh, having the, the Germans here, the Italians here, any number of this. It's almost European kind of a set that really flocks the Key West the best. So I'm going to guess that you've got another year and a half or two of just this kind of little dormancy as Europe kind of works its way through this, as we all work our way through this. Um, so what do you anticipate taking place this year with the tourist industry? I mean, who could tell? But Well, uh, the biggest thing for us is getting back people back in Key West. Mm -hmm. That's what we need the most right now. So if everybody can come back to the city, then we get back in track to the normal that supposedly we're going to have. So if we cannot get the cruise ships right now, at least we can have tourists coming down again from all over the country. You know, this is such an incredibly beautiful little idyllic island that you have here. And yet so many people have this skewed viewpoint of Key West being just Duval Street. And I think maybe in some ways this pandemic has helped because it's taken the push off of Duval and maybe allow those people not to come here who just want to have that kind of frivolity. It's more like New Orleans kind of a thing, right? Exactly. And it restores Key West to just the splendor of what a beautiful island it is, at least my viewpoint. Well, I'll tell you this. We have so many different places that you can visit while in Key West. As being 90 miles away from Cuba, we also have a lot of little, different spots, sure. you know, that can reflect all the immigrants that came in in the 50s and the 60s mm -hmm. before everything came down the drain but we have a lot of diversities in everybody here that comes down to the keys if you had a, uh, a favorite historic or ghost uh, story about the west would it be oh no <laughs> if we talk about that it's, 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 a, it's a whole new different program because right um a few years back you know, once you live in Key West, you don't get to do the tourist stuff all the time until you get family come and visit. Of so we did a, a little ghost tour that went to the um, Dormatalo by the airport. And that one was a little crazy because, I mean, they have stories that you can't even think of. Sure. And the biggest thing was doing it at night. I mean, I don't know how people can live in front of the uh, cemetery. I, I'm, I won't take a house there because it's a little scary for us. But you know what? One of the things that we learned there was that some of the houses there, actually people get to enjoy living in front of the cemetery. So that's a great thing. Well, when we leave here, we will uh, you know, make a quick stop over by Hemingway, but then the East Montello and uh, give Robert a little visit there. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I've got my own stories of the Robert doll. So uh, it has been an honor to be here. I, I love the fact that you are here. This is, again, one of my favorite restaurants in the country. Thank you, and as thank a you. Chef, I think that's just something, but uh, I look forward to seeing you in the future. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you so much. Cheers. Appreciate it. All right, so here we are, and uh, we took a short order to get our food up. I have a uh, grouper, lovely, simply fried grouper. Got a little bit of pork here for all of us, a uh, little asado kind of thing for us to get into, and uh, Brianna's got some chunked pork. And uh, what have you got, Patrick? Uh, skirt steak. Skirt steak. All right. Uh, you know, cursory uh, Cuban yellow rice. And uh, of course, lime to make everything taste flavorful. Black and beans. Uh, black beans, of course. So here we are.